do you find that um, as a, it's quite common in the musical community, I guess, where people talk about mental illnesses and, and it seems to be fairly intrinsically linked with, I guess, trying to be creative but not having a, I don't know, a reward or a, yeah, an yeah. outlet for it, I guess, is, yeah. is sort of a thing there. Um, yeah, it is something I think about. I wonder if the um, if people with mental illness are drawn to more creative pursuits. Yeah, yeah. Or the creative pursuits and the lack of reward breeds mental illness. Or maybe it amplifies it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, but it, it is certainly prevalent yeah. in, in the music industry. You know, you probably know the statistics. The suicide rate's pretty high. Yeah, yeah. And all the rest of it, and you know, the mortality rate for musicians is not real good either, and that's for various reasons. You yeah, yeah. Um, there's several cliches built into the lifestyle. It's well, yeah, to... there's that, but also I don't know, like having spent it's not so much now because there's no smoking in pubs. But I remember, you know, playing especially pubs with low roofs, and you'd look out and just go, "Holy crap!" There's just this mist of cigarette. Yeah, yeah. And you're breathing all that in, and bands in the '70s and '80s that were playing four or five nights a week. Yeah. And they're breathing that in. If you don't smoke, guess what's going to happen? Yeah, that's the work environment. Yeah. yeah. But you know, and also there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of travelling. There's a lot of time between sound check and the gig, and so people get bored, and they and you know you're in an industry where you get paid in alcohol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, you know, there's always, you know, especially in the old days, it was like two cartons of beer was kind of standard a for a rider. Yeah. Yeah. So people drink and then people do drugs and whatever and yeah. that leads to a whole other yeah, yeah. 